you're up. Wonderful. Thanks very much. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about work that I did with uh, Rob when he was on sabbatical here almost two years ago now, even, um, and with Patrick more recently. And so when Rob was here, we were sort of thinking about block preconditioning a bit. And so I have a, a model problem here. So I want to solve stationary Rayleigh Bernard convection. And after Newton linearization, I get a three by three block system like this. And Rob and Vicky in 2012 cooked up a preconditioner for this scheme that looks something like this. So I say, oh, I'm going to do cryo iterations on my block system with some preconditioner. And my preconditioner is going to be a block multiplicative combination of a preconditioner for the scalar advection diffusion problem and the Navier-Stokes problem. And there are a bunch of different ways you might think of preconditioning Navier-Stokes, and one of them is the sort of PCD-like approximation where I do a sure complement and I approximate the inverse of the sure complement with this pressure convection diffusion commutator here. So I've written it like this. If you want to know why it should be like this, ask me afterwards. Um, okay, so I can do almost all of this with Petsy solver options right now. So I say, oh, I'll do FGM res on the outside. I'll have a field split pe preconditioner type. I'll do multiplicative. I'll split the fields so that I get the Navier-Stokes on its own. For field split zero, I'll do GM res. I'll do sure complement with a lower sure complement factorization. I'll do something on the vector convection diffusion thing. And I'll do PCD on the sure complement, and I've got a big, big x here because I have a problem at this point. And the problem is, how do I get all of these operators into the preconditioner for this bit? Because notice they don't appear anywhere in the matrix that you started with. So the idea we had is basically sort of endow discretized operators with PDE level information, enable standard field splits on these operators. They're just matrices. You can do some splitting on them. And then write custom preconditioners that utilize this. And I work on the FireDrake project. So obviously, the way to do this is in FireDrake. So we sort of like extended Petsy with sort of Fidrate level preconditioners. So we already have this great algebraic composition of solvers. I can build all the auxiliary operators you want pretty easily, and so I just need to combine them appropriately. And so there are two bits. So there's like a shell matrix that implements matrix free actions, but remembers where it came from in terms of the PDE. You could do all this with assembled matrices if you desired, but you'd have to basically like still have this symbolic stuff and have an AIJ rather than a matrix-free action. And then I have to write custom preconditioners because the matrices don't have entries, but I have symbolic information so I can do things. So one of the things here, here's a very simple thing. I'm going to solve A equals B for X. And I'll do matrix-free actions. And my preconditioner, I'll just assemble the matrix and do something there. So I mean, this sounds like hard work, right? Because I've gone from just oh, programming with options to, oh, now you have to write your own preconditioners. Uh, fortunately, <coughs> thanks to Lissandro, Pepsi for Pi makes this almost trivial to do this. So I write a little preconditioner, and I write the setup method and the apply method. And then I say PC type Python, PC Python type my PC, and it all works. And Pepsi still manages all the splitting and nesting, so this does all the right stuff inside multigrid and so on. And so recall this problem. How did I get LP inverse, MP inverse, and FP into the solver? Well, my solution, I write a custom preconditioner that makes them, that calls back to the PDE library. So because I do this in FireDrake, I can write it on a slide. Just about. I mean, I've, I think I've elided about 10 lines. So basically, I have a PCD PC, and in its setup, it gets the operators. It pulls out the test and trial functions and the meshes. 
I build the convection operator, and I assemble it, and I build the pressure Laplacian with boundary conditions, and I make KSPs to invert it, and I build the pressure mass matrix similarly, and I make KSP to invert that, and then the application is a few lines. So this is great, I think. Uh, and it works pretty well. And so now I can answer the question, how do I program this right with options? Well, this XXX is just replaced with these few lines of solver configuration. So if you want all the gory details, Rob and I have a paper that's recently appeared in CISC, and one of the appendices shows a complete configuration. And you can even download the code and try and run it. Ah, oh, this is not the slides I thought I was going to have. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, so Schwartz smoother. So now that I have a hammer, can I find some nails? Um, so this kind of... So Nicole gave a lovely talk that's much better than anything I could give on Schwartz methods yesterday, but I think somehow from a software engineering point of view, Schwartz building blocks, I need sort of a subspace decomposition operators on the subspaces, solvers, and coarse spaces. And so I don't have those yet. Um, and I wrote, Rob did a little bit, and then this year with Patrick, we've extended this quite a lot, a PC type which I've called Patch, which hopefully will be in Pepsi real soon now. It's in a branch. And the idea is, is you use DMPlex and Pepsi, Pepsi section for subspace decomposition. You have a callback interface to do the assembly because I don't want my preconditioner to have to re-implement all of the operator assembly and so on. And then a KSP on each patch for all the solves. And so the subspace definitions, how do I do this? Well, I define them topologically, so each patch is defined by a set of mesh points on which the DOFs are free, so those are the ones I want to solve for, and then, so we have some built-in things, so we can specify patches by selecting the set of mesh points to iterate over, for example, vertices or cells, and an adjacency relation that gathers points in a patch, and because this is DMplex, we use the language that you don't, you always have to look up what this means. Um, but I've got some diagrams on the next slide so you can see it. And we have user-defined callbacks as well if these built-in ones don't do what you want. So basically you say, oh, how many patches do I have? You build a list of ISs where each IS specifies the, point, specifies the points you want to solve for, and you can provide an iteration order. So that means you can do like typewriter sweeping and all this kind of stuff. So patch construction, so star, what does this mean? So if I'm going to loop over vertices, I'm going to select my mesh point. I'll add all the mesh points in the star. And then I'll complete, and at the moment we complete with finite element adjacency, because that's what I do. But you could complete with whatever you needed. And so on this patch, all of the guys that are in magenta and the big sort of orange guy in the middle, if there are degrees of freedom on those topological entities, they're free and I will solve for them. And uh, these guys I'll have boundary conditions on. And at the moment, again, we only have homogeneous Dirichlet, but I think it's just a little bit of programming to put other boundary conditions in. We can do Fanker, so you can do monolithic multigrid smoothers. So for P2, P1, I might want to loop over the vertices, select the mesh point, add the points in the star, add the points in the closure of the star, and then complete with finite element adjacency. So this is why Vanka is a really expensive smoother, because for e in 2D, for each vertex patch, I need to assemble over a patch of elements like this. And in 3D, well, I can't draw 3D diagrams, but you can imagine what it might look like. So what's nice about this is this is completely sort of like discretization independent because you've split the subspace decomposition into a topological thing plus where did I get the DOS from from a function space 
and then your operators just do assembly on the package, whatever that means. And so I think this is quite nice. I mean, it requires slightly more setup than purely algebraic preconditioners. You need to feed in the operator callback and some discretization information. I think the beautiful way to do this would be to make lots and lots of tiny little DMs because then everything falls through, but Matt says, oh, we tried that in the past, it's too slow. But I think, I mean, that's the sort of nice, composable way of doing it, but maybe you can't do this. So I do this with the same Python interfaces for the block preconditioners, and it opens up the mo for ability for monolithic multigrid in Pepsi. The code is available. We have a branch in Pepsi. Hopefully, it will be ready to, to go soon. Um, and so at this point, I'd updated my slides, and what I really wanted to show you was this exciting stuff. So with Patrick, we have a paper in pre preparation, but I'll keep talking while David musses around. So this is an example. I've got P2, P1 Stokes with viscosity contrasts. I mean, it might be that I just screwed this up, so. I'm now going to reload this and grab the slides again and see if yeah. that helps. Um, OK, so for Stokes with viscosity <laughs> contrasts, I can do Vanka with like five multigrid levels, and the contrasts are pretty big, and I get So if you go to the appendix, and uh, yes. Sorry. What? Yeah, great. OK, so this is the thing that's really exciting. So we're using this at the moment for Reynolds number and mesh independent solvers for stationary and compressible Navier stokes. So it turns out everyone goes, oh, PCD, oh, you can't do high Reynolds number Navier stokes. And in 2006, Benzie and Olshansky have this paper where they build sure complement schemes for augmented Lagrangian Navier stokes that are Reynolds number independent. But what, like, it's pretty tricky to get right because you can only do geometric multigrid. They only do it in 2D. And basically, no one, no, like people do like gradative stabilized Navier Stokes, but they just do direct solvers on the momentum block. But this paper tells you how to do multigrid on the momentum block, and it works. <coughs> and so this is a 2D example. So we're doing backward facing step and up to, so we haven't done really big runs yet because we're fighting with supercomputers, but on laptops, on Patrick's hefty workstation, 47 million degrees of freedom, five Krylov iterations per Newton step at Reynolds number 10, six at Reynolds number 5,000. It looks pretty much the same in 3D as well. It's maybe a little bit Reynolds number independent, but it's pretty good. We have a paper that is in preparation and should hopefully be on the archive by the end of the summer. No. Uh, so, if you do, so <laughs> this really relies on being able to characterize the kernel of the divergence. And in, if you have P0, then you can do it locally, and it makes the smoothers and everything quite nice. Uh, that, the Benzie and Olshansky paper, they run some results <coughs> in P2, P1, and it's, like, it is Reynolds number dependent, but it, it seems to work. I don't think we've reproduced the same kind of, I don't think we've tried that hard. Um, but you could give it a go. Uh, what's nice about this is P2, P0, and, well, not P2 plus facet bubble, like cubic facet bubble P0, but t P2, P0, and P3, P0 are the statically condensed Scott Vigilius discretizations that you want to solve on barycentrically refined meshes. So potentially we could do something where we get full accuracy with Scott Vigilius but solve P2, P0 or P3, P0 problems. So with that, I will conclude with a slide, a link to the paper Rob and I have on the archive and in CISC, and um, I'll take any questions.
I don't know. Like half of them are just two little letters different, but it slowly changes the equation. So yeah. So the clauses are all stationary. Yeah. So Patrick is very interested in this because then you can do like stationary shape optimization and bifurcation analysis on all of these kind of things. So time dependent in some ways is easier because you have these like mass terms and the sure complements and ISA. Um, so the solvers are nicer. Yeah, you add a mass matrix to the diagonal uh, for, the, for uh, unsteady. So it's, it's basically similar as far as the uh, solvers. 